really positive news uh, announced today that we've got two sites in Nottinghamshire into the final 15 uh, nationally bidding for uh, to host a new step fusion energy power plant really important for the future hundreds of millions of pounds of investment and job creation in Nottinghamshire if one of those sites one in Bassett Law one in Rushcliffe is selected uh, as well as a carbon neutral energy source for the future incredible opportunities in terms of skills and research uh, and the Nottinghamshire being at the forefront of all of that research and investment so great news uh, hopefully we can go further final announcements in terms of choosing a place uh, probably this time next year My name is Boyd Elliott and I'm the chair of the Adult Social Care Committee. We've just had a really exciting first sitting of the committee and we've decided that how we're going to spend our £6.4 million given by government. We've just agreed public health officials, Covid doorstep testing, track and trace and this is just one more step to our Covid recovery and how we're looking after the residents of Nottinghamshire and keeping them safe. Okay, everybody, welcome to the first Economic Development Asset Management meeting, uh, actually in person. Way. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'd just like to set the tone a little bit, really. Uh, in the full council meeting, the, the leader came, uh, made it very clear that we, we want to work with everybody, you know, and actually work for the community and keep things, um, you know, so we can advance and make things happen. Clearly, opposition, your opposition, and it's for you to raise points, but I hope it will be done in a good spirit, without it being personal, yeah, and it's about the actual items that we're doing. Um, and I may to listen to your suggestions as well. It's, you know, it's not going to be dismissed. If they're good suggestions, we'll look at them and take them forward. It's as simple as that. So that's the tone I'd like to set, please, um, and I hope everybody will, will move into that. Um, and let's get on with it. So item one, then, is to note the appointment of me as the chairman and uh, councillor Deer and my Katrona as vice chairman. I think that's just for noting. So we'll nod. I think that's <laughs> terms of reference is on page one to four. Again, that's a noting item. Uh, thank you very much. And then the uh, minutes of the last meeting. I think there's only one person that was actually there, isn't there? And that was that you, Reg. I was anybody else there on that last meeting? I don't think so. So is it a true reflection, Reg? Lovely, thank you. <laughs> Any apologies for absence? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Smith replaces Councillor Zadrozny for this meeting only. Thank you. Welcome, Helen. Uh, okay, item five then. Declaration of interest of members and officers. That's none. Thank you very much. Okay. That takes us into item six, then, the progress of the COVID-19 crisis 
Economic Recovery Action Plan. Matthew. Thank you, Chair. Um, so the report uh, has been brought to the uh, COVID Recovery uh, Committee uh, previously, now coming to this uh, committee, Chair. Um, it provides an update on the work that we've been doing with partners and other colleagues in relation to um, the Economic Recovery Action Plan and the actions contained within. Um, it talks about the impact from government uh, funding, but also um, the different um, uh, regime and different um, initiatives that we've been putting in uh, with uh, businesses and supporting uh, the skills agenda. Um, there are different routes that are described within the uh, appendix where funding has been obtained. Um, and one of the recommendations talks about us bringing a further report just to provide a bit more detail on that going forward. Um, the, the report itself um, is allowing members to provide a bit more um, um, a, a, a bit more input into the actions and, and what we've done to date, um, so that we can incorporate that within the within the plan moving forward. Um, and obviously, we can provide routine progress on a on a quarterly basis, suggested to this committee, um, in respect of uh, how we proceed under the under the uh, plan. Um, the the report. Um, obviously highlights the amount of funding that we've been able to generate to date um, as part of our uh, recovery plan, uh, a, a figure of around about 11.4 uh, million, um, and then details some of the items where we are continuing to work on um, the elements of, of, of the action plan itself. So, for example, our plans for the uh, Digital Innovation Centre um, and what we're doing around uh, the Warm Homes Hub. Um, Furthermore, it, 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 it identifies the Community Renewal Fund, which uh, is, is going to be a report to uh, Policy Committee uh, tomorrow, um, but to obviously highlights that we are a lead authority in relation to that, and that will also impact um, on, the, on the recovery plan as we, as we move forward, um, and the recommendations are detailed within the report. I'll second that and reserve my right to speak. Thank you. Anybody, any comments or questions? Helen. Yeah, thank you, Chair, and congratulations on your appointment as Chair. Um, Chair, in paragraph two of the report, it states that the COVID-19 crisis economic recovery plan outlines an ambitious plan to supercharge the Nottinghamshire economy in the wake of COVID-19. As members will know, it was announced last week that 62.6 .6 million has been secured for Kirkby and Ashfield and Sutton in Ashfield as part of the government's Towns Fund, together with funding secured from the Towns Fund Accelerator Fund and the recently announced Future High Streets Fund. Over 70 million has now been secured for Ashfield. Together with co-funding, this will bring well over 100 million of investment into the district over the next five years. This is what you call supercharging. I appreciate that this news was too late for this report and congr congratulations must also go, Mr Chairman, to Broxtow Borough Council, who secured 21.1 million in the Towns Fund to regenerate Stapleford. Our next step is to look to the Leveling Up Fund recently announced to provide much needed investment in places like Cookmill and Eastwood. Mansfield Bono 3.2's Tony Della Hunty, when welcoming this news, said the, I can't even speak now. the successful regeneration bid underlined the importance of local councils like Ashfield. He was right last summer in the middle of the COVID pandemic our council carried out its most successful consultation since we were created in 1974. This was central to the success. We carried the support of the socially distanced public with us. Residents feel part of Ashfield are engaged with their council, and this is something Nottinghamshire County Council needs to progress further. When we started our bid process, COVID was unheard of. We developed our plans, however, in the light of COVID. We shaped them into an ambitious bid to aid recovery. We will be prioritising business growth, education, sport, health and wellbeing, boosting our visitor economy and we'll be making Ashfield greener. Chair, there are many good things in this report, not least the plans to improve the visitor economy. These have many synergies with what we are planning in Ashfield. This includes continuing our work to make the Kings Knoll Reservoir a visitor attraction and to continue our work with the Sherbet Observ Observatory to make their amazing plans a reality. Can I take this opportunity to invite you, Mr Chairman, and members of the committee come and visit these attractions and see firsthand the amazing vision that we can work, get working together. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Was there actually a question in that or was that just a grand statement of how wonderful Ashfield is? 
It was an invitation to you and the committee, Mr Chairman, to come right. and see some of the projects that um, I know one of them is we have been working with the County Council okay. on as well. More, more than happy to come. All you had to do was say we would like you to come up and see our ambitious plans. But yeah, and, and uh, Kate. Yes, thank you, Joe, and congratulations on your appointment. And actually, I think Helen makes a good point for a different reason, I think, because one of the things that struck me about this, and we're happy to support it, you know, it's, 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 it's very good, and it's good you brought, brought, brought the money in, is that actually, I think what needs to be done is actually we need, you, we need to be more aware of what's going on in all the different divisions, particularly around the tourism and, and the heritage thing. I mean, a lot of what goes on at the moment is, is on kind of building our own and, you know, I mean, developing our own, which is fine, and I understand that, and we need to do that. But there's some fantastic stuff going on around the rest of the county in terms of tourism and heritage. I mean, I could reel them off in my division. You know, there's Canalside Heritage Centre, there's Atterbury Nature Reserve just down the road outside my division. And uh, that really isn't flagged up in here. And I just, I just wonder if we can really get more member involvement in this so you know so more so actually we can and i'm not I'm not, I'm not saying spend massive amount of money but just raise the profile get more people coming in because nothing to a brilliant place to visit but it's not just because of the kind of half dozen kind of areas that kind of, that kind of, kind of reg regularly um um flag up and yes great news for state but thank you for for, for for raising that one i think we're highly delighted there uh, i just the only other thing i was going to say as well is um um in terms of some of the numbers and uh, I mean, particularly say for example around the, around the hospitality uh, um, business um, we've seen on the news haven't we the impact of covid on the hospitality and how difficult it's going to be and i just wonder if there's any kind of analysis any kind of research that's being done to actually see how we can support that a bit more proactively and of course there'll be other businesses that i won't be aware of that i'm sure that will want that as well and of course it's the jobs i mean although it's great that some jobs being created the numbers are quite small aren't they and i just think well you know, just looking at the yellow pages, um, I think this is 10 in the yellow pages. You've got Business Goal Creative Programme, which sees Nottinghamshire as a place to invest. And you've got 62 organisations, 138 new jobs. It just feels quite modest, doesn't it, given the size of the county? And I just wonder, a number of things asked, actually, how effective this is being? And two, how, to what extent you're flagging up these opportunities out there? Because I, I don't know about, I'm sure members here, a lot of them have had their inbox full of people saying, can I get some more money? This is my situation. And you know, people aren't necessarily always clear on whether or not there's a better way of steering people to kind of the right information so they can actually, they can actually kind of get it and get into it um, a bit, 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 bit more effectively. Um, okay, and again, and again, I was going to make a kind of a, a similar thing about heritage. There's some brilliant heritage going on in my patch and elsewhere as well. And I know we've got a heritage officer who's very good. Um, but again, you know, it, it should be county-wide. If we're going to really badge up Nottinghamshire, Nottinghamshire is a great place to invest, a great way to visit, we need to spread our wings a bit more and say, look at all this fabulous fabulous stuff that's going on throughout the whole county, not just, you know, <laughs> in kind of very, very kind of specific ones that kind of get rolled out every time. Okay. I think that's me done. Thank you. Th thanks, Kate. Before I hand you over to... Um... Matthew, for any comments, you, you know, answers you want to give in. Uh, um, you, you're pushing on open door. I think uh, I'm really keen that actually uh, we look very closely at all the districts and boroughs and their um, visitor economies, because they've all done them. I'm, I'm, as you know, I'm deputy leader of Newcastle District Council, and we've done a really good visitor economy strategy. So, that you know, I think it's important that what we do here at the County Council complements it. Yeah, and complements uh, throughout all the, all the county, and, and and our job here in the county is to draw them all together. Yeah, because we know that, that if you come for the day, your spend is about three pound, four pound, but if you spend the night, you're talking about it being. 40, 50, 60, 70 pound. It's a massive difference and it's really important that we give people a reason to come to Nottinghamshire and not just go to Newark and Sherwood, not just go to Ashfield, not just go to Mansfield or wherever, to actually look at Nottinghamshire as a really good destination to spend the week under all sorts of activities. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, Matthew, he, he knows my opinion on it and he, he'll be working really hard to, to make sure that's integrated into our uh, involvement in, in the visitor economy in Nottinghamshire. So definite open door there, and I absolutely agree. In terms of the, in my, this is my perspective, he'll come up with the, the official answers, but in terms of job creation, yeah, we, there's some more funding that's come out and organisations have put their names down to create the jobs and that. And my message back to them is the same isn't good enough. Yeah, we want better performance from you. Yeah, we'll be looking at your performance this time to see if you get any funding in the future. So really take this on board and don't just do the same old, same old, because that 
tends to be what's easy. Yeah, we've got to start thinking out the box. So I'm driving that from a uh, my my job perspective uh, to make sure that message goes out to these people that get the money to create these jobs. So I hope that satisfies you in terms of what what I would like to see happen. Do you, is there anything you'd like to come back on, Matthew? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, just for um, Councillor Fall, but for for other members of the committee, um, we're due to bring a report to the next committee around the visitor economy and heritage um, strategy. So. Um, obviously, we'll be looking for um, more comment as we go as we go through that process, and we can obviously incorporate some of the more uh, countywide uh, initiatives, as, as has been mentioned. Um, in terms of the uh, jobs position, just picking up on your point, Chair, you'll see in uh, obviously tomorrow's report around the Community Renewal Fund that we are having some further. We're looking to bid for further funding um, to increase the number of jobs within the within the county, and we will. Um, we'll obviously be monitoring that quite closely as part of this committee as we as we move forward, subject to the recommendation that it being approved at policy committee. Uh, Councillor Shaw. Thank you, Chair, and uh, welcome to your position. Um, I also welcome this report. Um, I appreciate that COVID has been a massively challenging uh, for councils in Nottinghamshire and Ashfield alike. Um, I'm going to be a bit parochial here. It's only right that COVID recovery is at the heart of everything that councils do, uh, and rightly so. Um, that's why this report is important to everyone. Uh, in Hucknall, uh, like other towns in the county, uh, and its uh, town centre and environs, um, that have taken a massive hit. Businesses and retailers um, and traders have really, really struggled. And it's been apparent when you've been on the on the street, uh, on the doorstep and on in the high street that you've seen a shrinkage in, in footfall within within the town centres. Uh, and that's why I'm proud that Ashfield di uh, District, has, uh, like other councils such as Newark and Sherwood, um, have, have worked so hard to pay the government grants uh, quickly via a back system and worked to ensure that a complicated application process has been streamlined. And I know that businesses in, in places like Hucknall were very, very grateful, and beyond, and in Sutton, and in Kirkby, and so on and so forth. Um, but this report and its appendix, uh, quite rightly, talks about supporting the current traders and whilst being ambitious for the future. Our COVID information officers in Ashfield have visited every retailer at least six times in the last few months, providing the help and service um, on a daily basis. So I'm asking you, Chair, what more can the County Council do to work with the borough councils, the district councils in identifying funding opportunities uh, like the government's levelling up fund. Uh, we want to put a multi-agency bid in for Hucknall, led by the District Council. We want to inv <clears throat> involve uh, the voluntary community groups, the, the CCG, the NHS, yes, and the County Council. But I want to know what more we can do to actually drive this forward in Hucknall. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, yeah thanks. Um, in terms of driving it forward from the county council perspective is is we'll work closely with any of the districts and boroughs that want to work closely with us and we'll assist them where we can in in making sure that there's a strong bid i think what one if anything this this the covid situation has brought uh, a lot of uh, groups together to work collaboratively to make sure that we get these bids and the nottingham county council have been very very successful in 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 making sure that the money comes to nottinghamshire yeah, and they've been working very closely with the districts and boroughs so that they get their um, input into it and, uh, and help that bid be strong. So I know for a fact that in terms of Newark and Sherwood, for example, that some of their bids, they've included Highways England, they've got um, New Nottinghamshire County Council involved. You know, any group that's, that's related to that bid would be daft not to be involved. And we're keen to play our part in that. Yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's uh, you know, from, from me. Do you want to add anything to that? Uh, I, I guess I'd just add that um, I sit on the Discover Ashfield board as a supportive member as well. So I do work with the districts, as, as you've highlighted there, Chairman. So there is that embedded into what we're trying to do here with the recovery plan. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, Glenn. Thank you, Chairman, and uh, congratulations uh, on your appointment. Chairman. What I would want to see is what is the total impact on the local economy, and I don't. I personally don't think we've got that. I mean, we we hear things, and we, mm. you know, we've heard uh, issues around the nighttime economy, 
uh, issues around uh, hoteliers, etc., issues right across the board. But I don't think we actually know what the full full impact is. Um, some of the the concern I've got about some of the funding issues is that the deadlines uh, are very tight. Um, <laughs> and dare I say, you know, we haven't all got, and, and neither has some of the the uh, uh, business community, oven ready deals uh, that they can sort of say, here you are, we've got this, fund it. Because um, in fact, some of them haven't been able to get into the workplace or do anything for the last few months. So for me, you know, I want a bit more detail about what's going off. I mean, I'll give you, for instance, in the sense of when we're talking about uh, unemployment levels, there are factories in workshop who are struggling to recruit. I know one factory alone that's got 300 vacancies and can't get people. Mm. Now, the impact of that, I think, is um, the return of a number of people from various countries back to the uh, former country in, in one particular thing. It could be a, a number of issues. It could be the wage levels uh, that people aren't attracted to. Uh, but I know, you know, well, it's two companies, two major companies that are struggling to recruit. Um, and that's a sizable amount of jobs. And I think we need to understand why that is. Um, and, you know, the impact as well, the impact of shopping online, what's that having to town centres? Uh, and, and some of this detail really does need to get together because we, what we could end up doing is just chucking a lot of money that actually doesn't give us that sustainable end uh, life that we want. Because clearly, um, you know, people can jump out of all sorts of corners saying, oh, we can do that, we can do that. In reality, what what, what the public out there need and what people want is, is sustainability in life. Um, I mean, we don't, at some point, uh, uh, some time ago, even local authority workers, you could say that when you, you came here for a job, you got a job for life. Mm. But even local authority workers can't say that these days. Um, you know, it's year on year because we do not, we've no certainty around the funding. And, and out there in, you know, on the, on the street and everywhere else, everybody else is feeling like that. But I personally do not know um, the full impact that COVID has had. And I don't know, we, I know sometimes that means that you've got to, employ people to do a lot of research into it. But I think some of that is necessary because we could be making decisions around things that in, in reality, we waste we waste the money that we've been given. And, and I think we've only got this one chance because once, once we've got through this, I think the government will go back to, um, you know, we've got to look at the finances because we don't know where inflation's going and everything else. Um, and, and we could have big problems. So I want to see a lot more detail about what, what is the true impact. Who, who Do we know what business are affected? Because, um, you know, we keep hearing that there's more falling by the wayside. Even the impact of this extension of a month, you know, we've seen them all on TV saying we won't be able to survive. Now that, you know, that is really serious. And, uh, and what I want to see is to say is the impact of that coming forward. Yeah, thanks, Glenn. I think, I think the full impact of COVID, we're, we're not going to know that for, for quite a while yet because um, as we start to come out of it and uh, things like the furlough stops and all that sort of thing, which I believe is having an impact in finding people to be employed because at the moment, yes, they might not be getting as much as they were, but they're not having to do anything to get that money. And it's, and it's getting them back into work. You know how difficult it was coming back here having had a year out it, you know it's getting back into the routine oh you know how, how does it work how do we go and there's uncertainty in individuals out there so that's going to have a major impact uh, whether or not it's it's uh, foreign workers or not um, i know in my area we have a lot of foreign workers and they're not struggling um, uh, to employ in in those sectors so i'm not sure and i don't think anybody will know yet I think that's information that will come from a higher level when they do all the analysis. <clears throat> in terms of the tight deadlines, I think um, one of the disadvantages of that is, is not really the tight deadline and getting a bid in. It's when it's got to be spent by, which makes it more difficult. And it, and it puts an advantage in, in areas and councils that have uh, shovel-ready um, projects. 
Yeah, so if you've got a shovel-ready project, you can get in there and bid for it and likely to succeed. Those that haven't got into that position were going to be disadvantaged by that. Um, and, and it's like anything. I think there's a keenness to try and kickstart the economy and put things in there. You know, they're piling a lot of money. If you look at the amount of money that's been ploughed into Nottinghamshire, if you look at all the districts and boroughs, the money they've been given, you know, to try and kickstart the, the economy, as long with us, it's, it's a phenomenal amount. And that's been duplicated all over all over the all over the country so deadlines i think i think whether or not they go back to how it used to be i don't think they will i think they'll there'll be more uh, more of this in the future and i think it will drive councils to be in a position where they're ready to respond to such things and i don't think that's particularly a bad thing actually you know it means we, it means we're on our metal in terms of what we want to achieve so yeah, it's frustrating. I know it's frustrating. I, I, you know, I'm I live in a community where I'm involved in the business community, uh, and I I get all the in the neck. Why why is this happening? This extra four weeks hard to understand, but they've always said you know dates are um, an aiming point. If we have to change it, we will. And live it, and you know whether you believe in it or not, that's what they've done. In terms of High Street, before COVID, yeah, it was known that. High streets are going to shrink by 40% over the next 30 years. So that was in the cards, on the cards anyway, as people's um, purchasing uh, patterns change. You know, I was one, I always bought local, never bought online. I bought on eBay once and got ripped off, so I definitely didn't buy online. COVID's made me buy online, and I've got used to it. So there's going to be a lot of people in that position where they're used to buying online now, and they're not going to go back into the marketplace. You know, and, and yes, we have a responsibility to help deal with that, but so do businesses. They've got to look at how they operate now. And I know from personal experiences that a lot of businesses have adapted. Yeah, I can give you lots of examples where uh, businesses would not do online selling because it was too complicated, too difficult. Enough people came in their shop to buy to make them the money they needed to make. They had to change there to adapt, and actually because of it, they're now doing really well. Yeah, so it's about everybody taking their responsibility. It's not just us that have to do that. Businesses have to look at how they operate as well. Um, do, you, do you have anything to... I know I keep answering all these questions. I don't know if I should be. Do you want to answer any of these, Matthew? I'm just giving my opinion, by the way. That's by, based on what I get come across as a councillor. No, I'm, I'm fine, Chair. Thank you. Yeah, I, th I, thought, I, I thought I probably covered it. Are you happy? Yeah. I just think, just, just. I mean, I don't want to put words in Glyn's mouth. I'm sure you'll tell me if I've got it wrong. But I think what Glyn's asking for is actually, what is the impact of COVID in this county? We've got stuff. You've got reactive stuff around funding streams, and you've got your action plan at the back, which is kind of addressing some of the issues. What it doesn't seem to have been is any kind of mapping exercise as to actually what what is it that people are going to need in Nottinghamshire in the next year, two years, whatever. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's more about what yeah. I was asking for. Oh, well, I think, I think if you look at the recommendation, Kate, that recommendation three is, is saying that, you know, that, that we're going to come back with information. You know, it's a, mo it's a moving feature. So what you did, you did, you did have a funding scheme, not what they were to say today. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I think we can certainly extend out the um, report and the presentation that we bring uh, next month round to to bring in some of the data and evidence. I'm very conscious we might have presented some of that to the three R's committee under the previous um, administration when we went through. Excuse me, when we went through a, a, a lot of data that's provided at national level, at the regional level, through the observatory that we've got across the Midlands, and then through the local level. I think, as the chairman's reflected, this is a it's a dynamic and changing position. But we can certainly try and um, provide a presentation with whatever the latest available data we have uh, to committee next time round. OK, thank you. Scott. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I, I really welcome this report coming to committee this morning and thank officers for the continued efforts in supporting businesses around the, the county. As we know, this last 18 months has been a slight and a from many. 
Um, I'd just like to draw particular attention to some good news stories, I believe, on page seven of the appendix under the kickstart scheme of this authority, in addition to the apprenticeship levy. And I note, as um, this report was written, that these figures were presented as the 13th of the 5th. My question would be, since that was put in, now, are we seeing an increase in the applications? But also, I'd just like to draw attention to the number of um, people that are or were in adult social care uh, progressing into an apprenticeship scheme and just to pick up on the points made by councillor Foll and Foyle um, I think obviously from your points chairman um, given your position on another authority and um, that the collaboration point is a way forward um, I think to a um, to a large point and um, through the various government grant support schemes our districts and boroughs we've actually unofficially carried out a big big business census so i think actually there's a lot of data there within our districts and borough yeah. partners that we can access um, moving forward i think that's right scott we don't have we don't have to reinvent the wheel the, the, the districts and boroughs have done a lot of analysis in terms of um what, what impact is having on their businesses i think we just need to uh, link into that to, to get a, a clear view really but but th thanks for that um and anybody else do any, anything to come back in, Matt? Yeah, um, so just to answer the question, um, yes, we have seen an increase, but I will give you the specific number um, outside of this meeting, if that's okay, Chair. Yeah, uh, on a, on a pre it's an interesting one, apprenticeships. Um, it's something I was used to be involved in uh, in, in a previous life, really, in in, uh, in getting apprentices, uh, apprenticeships. Uh, and in terms of the county council and its, its ability to have apprentices, is quite huge, but what I'd what, what I'd want to see, rather than us just have apprentices because um, a department wants thinks they could use an apprentice for a while, uh, and to do the apprenticeship, I'd like us to have, be a bit more business orientated on it. The fact that actually, is there going to be a need for that post? I you know we've got aging workforce. Is there going to be a job at the end of it? so that actually the apprenticeship leads to something rather than just they've had an apprenticeship, thank you very much, it's great for your CV, good luck in the future and I hope, hope you get on all right. You see what I mean? So there's more to it. We're giving them a real opportunity for an employment with us afterwards, not just giving them an apprenticeship. So, you know, that's something that we, we maybe need to sort of embed in, in how we do that. The only other thing I would say in terms of, because you have you did ask for comments in, in things that we could possibly do, Matthew, so I'm just going to add one that I think might be something worthy of a look. Um, we've heard today about the fact that, you know, uh, businesses are having to adapt. Uh, you know, the ones that bury their heads in the sand, they're going to struggle. But the ones that are adapting are, are, you know, doing well, actually. And I just wondered if there's some way that we can look at providing support in getting them to be able to do more online trading. Yeah, and I do know some of the districts and boroughs have gone down that line. For example, New Consure, they, they, they did a scheme helping people uh, upgrade their website so they could be e-commerce. Yeah, and it was taken up. In fact, I think they did, did, did the scheme three times because it was so successful. Is this something along those lines that we can do to help businesses be, be more efficient online? Because, you know, as much as we don't like the fact, I like to go in a shop and, and put a you know, try something on, it's, it's more and more now it is, is from the internet. And so if we can help them adapt to that, I think that'd be great. Okay, so we've had the recommendations and uh, seconded all in favour. That's unanimous, thank you very much. Okay, that takes us on then to agenda item seven, uh, recommendations on page 30. I propose the recommendations, can I have a seconder please? Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. I'd like to second that and I reserve my right to speak. Thank you very much. Matthew. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, report is hopefully uh, fairly self-explanatory. Um, it gives a, an update on the community infrastructure levy um, and the, uh, also identifies the um, projects within each of those uh, boroughs where there's currently a charging uh, mechanism. Um, it highlights those those uh, authorities, so Newark and Sherwood, Bassett, Law, Gedling and Rushcliffe, um, and then details the projects that we're proposing uh, me members uh, and councillors support 
um, as part of the as part of the report. Um, the report itself also um, gives a bit of an overview um, of the white paper uh, proposals, and um, we will obviously bring back further um, reports on that as we understand the uh, the changes that are likely to be to be made. Um, that's all, Chair, from from me. Thank you. Any any comments or questions? Councillor Shaw. Sure. Can you turn your mic on? I can't hear you. Sorry. I'm sorry, Chair. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Um, the, the application for the green and active uh, investment models in paragraph 7.1 states that the fund will help develop... Wrong models. report. I think you're fine. Oh, beg your pardon. Yeah, we're, we're, on, we're on the community infrastructure levy. Yeah. Item 7. Yeah. And, any comments, questions? Kate. Just one really, really quick one, and this is really kind of this is helpful. Thank you. You're happy to support it, but again, and I think just just to confirm, it would be nice to see the the other the other um, districts that use still use 106 money, wouldn't it? And I understand that there may be a report coming later on. And deep concern about Rushcliffe. I'm not actually got any money in at the moment because clearly there's, there's a need there for some for some sill or some 106 money, and I just wonder kind of how far that's got. Okay, I mean, my understanding is Rushcliffe don't have the same sort of expansion areas as, as the others anyway. I think that's part of it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. If, if I may uh, yep. answer that, Chair. Uh, Rushcliffe aren't shown as the table because they've only in recently introduced their sill, so they, they haven't yet uh, collected anything. But yep. Uh, in the fullness of time, when we bring further reports to uh, this committee, hopefully there'll be an entry for Rushcliffe. So uh, yeah. it's early days for them just at the yeah. moment. Yeah, I think I think uh, <laughs> Sill is one of those things, isn't it? We, we uh, the, say we, the district count, Newcastle district council sort of jumped in straight away. Um, and at the time, I, I didn't think that was a wise thing to do because um, it's adding an additional expense on things and actually we did find that some some development did go out of the area because of it so we adapted it so it's not just a you know we get loads of money by having it it's a really you have to consider how you use it and if you have it i think the i'd be interested to see the government's new formula for uh, charging developers um so that we can um, use it um have more scope to use it how we feel it should be used um, within within our districts and boroughs, so be interesting to see what they come up with. I'm quite quite looking forward to that. Um, is it a government autumn that it's going to be in, or is it a real autumn? They never say which year, do they? They just say in the autumn, um, and all governments are like that. Not not just mine, but uh, yeah, interesting. So anyway, the recommendations have been. Oh, sorry, Glenn. Yeah, Chairman, parochial but important. Clearly, um, you know, we we've, we've made a request for funding for the uh, school place issues at Bassett Law, the Outwood, both Outwood Portland and Outwood Valley are uh, oversubscribed. This year I know to 25 at least uh, appeals on places and that those individuals are being told, you know, you've either got to travel to Retford or to find other places, um, which is causing a lot of consternation in the area. Mm. Um, and I just wondered how far forward we are in relation to securing some monies towards that, even if it's only um, a couple of classrooms, which would relieve some of the pressure immediately. Um, secondly, I want to I slam a bid in for the projects that um, some members that you've got on, on the highways. The farmers branch at, um, at Worksop, Kilton, Kilton uh, Blythe Road, Farmers Branch Junction is a terrible, terrible junction to get out for. And because of uh, what is called the old Thiesdale Lane, there is no lorries uh, permitted to go down that, which is quite right. Then all the lorries come up from Blythe, turn right down there, but it's a hell of a junction for it to be turning at. And they are currently building uh, a load of houses down in that area. And that junction could really do with improving and it ought to have been as part of uh, the original development uh, that's been done down at the bottom, but it, it wasn't, it was missed. Um, and for me, I would wish officers to look at that and whether that could be put in as a bid for sale monies, because I know we won't 
um, with everything else that they've got on the council, the council itself won't be able to afford to contribute to do anything to it. But it really does because it's it's one where, you know, I know an accident. There has been accidents, luckily not serious accidents. Yeah. But it is uh, difficult. And it's not just me saying that. Highways officers that have gone across at that junction have said how bad it is. OK, Thank, thanks for that, Glenn. I'm sure we'll, we'll look at that. Thank you. Um, Roger. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> just to briefly clarify on what Sally Gill said, uh, as a member of Rushcliffe Borough Council and recently the Cabinet Member for Planning, in terms of the uh, member that brought forward the SIL for Rushcliffe, um, yes, it, it's quite recent that we did it. We have 13,000 plus houses being developed under our local plan. Many of them were um, approved before the SIL legislation. It's not retrospective, but an awful lot are. Uh, I think the current situation is around £300,000 is now in the Rushcliffe SIL kitty, so to speak. And we have sent out demands um, for the next 12 months to a lot of developers for the uh, sites that you see being developed out at the moment around Rushcliffe Borough. So we were the late... Uh, Borough to the party, if you like. Um, the demands have gone out. The, the silk kitty will rapidly increase. And I think at the moment we are discussing the detail uh, on those that framework that you see there on page 29 uh, of, of where the money should go. Thank you, Chair. Th thanks for the clarification. Uh, any more comments or questions? OK, recommendations have been... Oh, Reg? Just looking at the list here, we've got Bassett Law, we've got Gedling, we've got Newark and Sherwood, and obviously Rushcliffe are coming late to the party, but... We've got other uh, districts that are not on this list, and I want, I'll just, is there an explanation as to why they're not on this list? I mean, they have development in the area, like Ashfield and uh, Mansfield. They, they have, and they, they haven't gone down the S106 or the Sill route. I was just... Well, the law, the law will have the 106. We can follow, we can yeah. yeah, the law will have the 106. I don't, I don't know where... Um, our influences on that. I think that's down to the districts and boroughs, I'm right in saying, aren't it? That's their choice. Yeah. That's their choice. Um, as, as, as I said, Reg, there are advantages, but there also are disadvantages, and, and, and that's one of, the re one of the situations, I think, where we have to um, well, you know, abide chamber, by what they want. In this chamber, some of those councils have asked for projects, have asked for this, have asked for that. Yeah, yeah. But then the contributions that should come from the development is not there to deliver it. I, I, I totally agree. And, that, and that's that's the balance, isn't it? When, when, when we come to support projects, that, that's the balance in, in terms of what other districts and boroughs are contributing to that particular scheme. That's how, that's, you know, that's, that's how it is. So, OK, recommendations have been uh, recommended and seconded. Page 30, all in favour? Anybody against? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. That takes us on to item eight. That's the DEFRA Investment Readiness Fund. I'll propose as a proposal on page 38. Seconder, please. Second that and reserve the right. Thank you very much. Um, Matthew. Uh, thank you, Chair. Again, um, this is a report where we have submitted a bid um, for um, the Natural Environment Investment Readiness uh, Fund uh, underneath DEFRA. Um, and we, it's a bit of a retrospective report where we have put in uh, we've put in a bid uh, previously, but we're asking for uh, continued support from uh, members to 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 what we've submitted. Um, the report itself outlines the projects um, that we have submitted uh, bids for. Um, they range between uh, eighty-seven thousand and one hundred thousand pounds per uh, project. Um, the report itself again asks for uh, member support to us uh, completing a procurement exercise for if, should we be successful in our uh, bid process, but also uh, support from members for us to be um, sharing and 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 uh, sharing information with um, the Environment Agency and with DEFRA around the um, applications themselves. Um, the report sets out the four um, areas of, of of projects that we're we're looking to um, obtain funding for, um, and uh, and and what it's trying to encourage is a mix of public and private investment to uh, green initiatives within the within the county. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Shaw. Thank you, Chair. Apologies for earlier. I thought we were on eight. Um, the first application, um, green active investment models in paragraph 7.1 uh, report states that the fund will help develop the models to support the benefits 
to all for investing in ecosystem services at a sustainable transport location. Could you expand, please, on whether as part of this process we could identify, uh, we have identified any suitable sites and where they are? As a councillor for Hucknall, I've campaigned long and hard for an integrated, fully integrated transport system. Um, and luckily, we, have, we do have the uh, access to the tram. We do have access to the Robin Hood line. Um, but to actually expand on this, that area would be ideal for such an ecosystem. Um, and I'm thinking in, in terms of um, charging points for e-bikes, e I would think I'd be charging points for uh, e-cars. However, the site isn't big enough at the moment because it's re when it's being used to its capacity, it is full. So we really need to start thinking about that. And uh, we still fe face the challenges of persuading residents to use public transport. And we wouldn't be able to do that if we do have this monumental shift from carbon burning vehicles over to the green environment. Um, so I would... Um, put to the committee that Hucknall tram stop will be the area to actually uh, invest in this, this sort of uh, system, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shaw. Do you want to come back on that, Neil? Um, Neil, Mark, Matthew. Yeah, no problem, Chair. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Shaw, thank you for that. Um, I, I, we'll, we haven't uh, necessarily got a, a site in mind yet. We will, we've, we've got a number of sites that are, we'll obviously look at as part of the um, funding initiative should we be successful. Um, and we'll take Councillor Shaw's uh, site on board as part of that process. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? OK, it's been proposed and seconded. Uh, page 38, all in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. That takes us on then to the River Trent Partnership um, recommendations. I recommend them on page 43. Can I have a second, please? Thank you, Reg. Second, right. Yeah, thank you. and then, then Matthew. Uh, again, thank you, Chair. Um, so uh, this is a, a report just updating members and councillors in relation to the um, River Trent Partnership. Uh, which we've been asked to be become involved in and have been working with the Environment Agency, but also region-wide with um, our other uh, county council uh, colleagues um, in developing uh, projects and schemes uh, underneath the banner of the of, of the River Trent uh, partnership. Um, working very closely with the Environment Agency, we're looking to bid for some further funding um, underneath MCA, M MHCLG, uh, uh, something called the Partnerships for People and Place uh, project will help us to um, start to work up some more of those um, schemes that we can then submit to, to government. Um, the report's highlighted that um, there are there is some potential funding that we could access uh, underneath the National Infrastructure Strategy that was published by uh, this government, um, and we would want to use the uh, funding through this uh, process to be to enable us to develop projects uh, to submit for 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 that. Um, and as I say, we're coming together with uh, a lot of other uh, county councils to take this uh, take this initiative um, forward. Um, I, th I think I'll, I'll probably leave it there, Chair, but happy to answer uh, any further questions. Uh, any questions or comments? Kate? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, I think it's a really good idea. Happy to support it. But again, it's a little bit similar comment to the one I made, made earlier. Please, can we make sure that we actually kind of support and develop what is already there and, and build on uh, local knowledge, local members' knowledge, because um, and I've described you earlier, haven't I? One of these actually, which 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 actually was a, a massive, massive, a massive meeting of, around similar issues. I don't know if it was the same project or not. And um, it was the focus was not on building and rebuilding um, a, a sustainable um, um, partnership that actually people, so, so, there was, so, so the impact was good, so there were services that people wanted, there was opportunities that, that people wanted, and so actually kind of um, developed what was already there, some really, really good work, work that's already there. It, it needs to be bottom up, not top down. I think that's really what I'm saying. But, but I'm very happy to, uh, to support this. Yeah, if I, could, if I could come in on that, Kate, it is one of the things I'm doing straight away is going around to see all the uh, economic development chairmen of all the districts and boroughs. Okay, and that's his initial go and say hello. 
What is it you're trying to achieve? How can we assist? Where are we getting in the way? This is where you're getting in the way. Okay, that's that's my plan. It's not just going to be a one meeting. I want to build relationships with all the economic development chairmen in the districts and boroughs in the county so we can start, you know, collaboratively making it all work together. So all those sorts of things, hopefully, will be picked up during that point because I'll have officers with me as well. To, to make sure we get that, you know, across the passing over of information and, and ambitions, you know, because we all know that the districts and boroughs have ambitious plans. Yeah, some of them are really good and achievable, some might not be, but where we can help, I want to make sure that we do. Uh, and, and we're not there to sort of be the big brother and, and push out the way and, and say, well, actually, we think this is a better idea. We're there to, because at the end of the day, you know, you're on the ground as local members. You know what's happening in your patch better than I do as, as a chairman of this committee. Yeah, and I'm keen that we uh, really work closely with everybody to make sure we get the best. To me, it's about making the best, uh, best advantage of the money that we get and making sure that we get the best outcomes from it, yeah, for everybody. So, and I don't care who, who has the photograph, Look how wonderful I am. This is what we've done. I don't care. If we achieve what we need to achieve, that's brilliant. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, that's my job done. Okay. Um, sorry, uh, Councillor Cubley. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Now, I just wanted to give a lot of praise to the officers for making us a lead on this. This is going to have a major e economic impact and in a positive way, both on businesses and the residents who live and work along the River Trent. Now, with flooding and climate change changing so quickly, the flood defences are going to be so important for the economic prosperity of this county going forward into the future. So thank you. Lovely. I don't think there's anything to comment on that, but from say, well, well done for being on that. I think it's a really uh, positive um, move for that. Um, I'm sure you've got the capacity to do it. Um, or you'll be coming to see me that you haven't, <laughs> whatever. But I think, yeah, yeah, you've got yourselves in the right, right place. So well done for that. And let's hope, uh, let's hope the bids... A successful bid. And anybody else got any comments or questions? Okay, the recommendations then are on page 43, have been proposed and seconded. All in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. That takes on then to item 10, the work programme. Are you going to speak on this, Adrian? Thank you, Chairman. So, uh, members, you'll, you, you'll be aware that this is a, a relatively newly formed committee, but you can see on the work plan already are some of the items that would have previously gone to other committees under the former administration. Um, it is, as you know, a, a, a dynamic document and it will um, be populated as we go. Uh, I'm sure the chairman will be inviting of, of members to flag uh, items or issues, uh, as, as indeed you've done today, that you'd like um, to be considered for the work programme going forward. And um, we'll keep this as a live document for uh, committee as we move on. OK, and any questions or comments? I think Aidan's right. I am keen that if you've got something that you feel should be on there, please let me know yeah, and we can put it on the work programme. This is about you know, economic development. It's not just about properties and, and, and land. It's about the prosperity of this county. And, and you know, I've not got the exclusive ideas. If we've got some good ideas, we'll do a business case on them. And if, they, if they're doable, then we'll look to incorporate them into what we do. And this, so this is your opportunity to feed in. Um, that takes us to the end of the meeting. So I'd like to thank you all uh, very much for your uh, attendance and contribution. Um, I think we've got off to a good start. Nobody's got upset with me yet. So that's uh, always a bonus as far as, as far as I'm... Oh, no, there'll be time. There'll be time. I'm, I'm going to take this one as a... Put it in my diary as a, as a good meeting. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Really positive news uh, announced today that we've got two sites in Nottinghamshire into the final 15 uh, nationally bidding for uh, to host a new step fusion energy power plant. Really important for the future. Hundreds of millions of pounds of investment and job creation in Nottinghamshire if one of those sites, one in Bassett Law, one in Rushcliffe, is selected, uh, as well as a carbon neutral energy source for the future. Incredible opportunities in terms of skills and research uh, and the Nottinghamshire being at the forefront of all of that research and investment. So great news. Uh, hopefully we can go further. Final announcements in terms of choosing a place uh, probably this time next year.